Hello, Barmy Badger Army. Hey, Badger Army. Welcome to the show. Today, we're going to have a bit of a special episode, and we're going to talk about some follow-up topics that we've done before. We are. And we're also going to talk about some other bits and pieces, such as Batista and Rey Mysterio's return to WWE. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about uh, the Banksy shredding incident that we talked about the other week. Yes, we, of course, mentioned that last week. Yes. Uh, where it got, where the minute, second it got auctioned, for a ridiculous six-figure sum, a button somewhere got activated and it shredded. Indeed, but apparently half of, shredded. half of it shredded. This is true. Only leaving the signature red balloon on the canvas. And uh, Banksy has now gone on record on a website called The Lad Bible, and I believe that's from somewhere else. They picked up the interview yeah. where it actually went wrong. And in previous times, the actual shredding was meant to be completed and it was meant to be in pieces on the floor. For some reason, it didn't work and only half of the painting got shredded. So, you know, he's actually sort of done himself a cropper there because it's now worth a load more money as it's now a piece of art history, whereas before he wanted it to be in literal pieces. Your thoughts, Nick? Well, considering how intricate that plan was... I know, and apparently he practiced it, was, it loads as well. Yeah, I think, to be honest with you, it's probably a bit hopeful for something like that, something of that scale. Yeah. You know, when you consider what went into that, when you consider when you consider everything that went, in, went into that, you know, for it to, you know, for it to have all completely perfectly worked out may oh, well have mad. been a miracle. I know, but, yeah. You know, it's you know they could say there's some symbolism in the fact that only the balloon remains. This is true. You know? So and I mean that adds to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it still kind of made. It still kind of it did still make, you know, a statement. I this think. is true. A very big statement. I think it was you know, almost think, like, I'm shredding this. You're about to sell it, so I'm going to get rid of it. I bet you that was Banksy's thought. He was literally yeah. like, I know this is worth loads of money now. I know this is going to be worth loads of money, so now I am literally going to get rid of it, so now it no longer exists. There's something to be said about the fact that it that it worked at all. Indeed, you yeah, know, to some, be honest, you know, yeah. Something that intricate, as I was saying, you know, there's the fact that there was some, the fact that... He it, organised a mechanism. What would that have been, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? How would he have done I'm that? I'm not even sure. There's... You know, it's uh, it's. You can imagine it being something that. Comment below if you've got any ideas. You, you can imagine it being something that they use in certain industries where they've got to like activate a shredder of some sort from That's a distance. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there must you be know, the technology out yeah, there. Yeah, there's lots of power. Or he's he invented something, which is even maybe, more amazing. Maybe, but yeah, you can imagine there's like power tools that mm. people use, but they can't like be there, particularly if they, if they're going to be like shredding something really large. Yeah, like know. industrial fashion. Yeah. You you know, so they've they've got to kind of try and work. You know, they've and so they've got to have the ability to do that stuff from a distance. Mm. I mean, I can imagine the film industry using stuff. You know, yeah. they'll like do something to trigger an explosion. You mm. know, the uh, you know you can imagine something like that being used. You know, whether it's whether it's in in the construction industry or destruction industry yes, or indeed, the film depending. industry. Indeed, and that links us on to our next topic about. Rey Mysterio and WWE superstar and of course someone you've worked with Dave Batista return to Smackdown 1000 now don't get me wrong I'm an old-school wrestling fan here but these two guys are my favorite and uh, Rey Mysterio beat Sensei Nakamura which on his return I'm not too sure if it's all connected in with 2k19 but I know that Rey Mysterio is back for a short time and I'm really pleased because he was one of my bet favorite Mexican wrestlers of all time. If you haven't heard of Rey Mysterio and you're a wrestling fan, you need to check him out. And of course, Dave Batista made a shock return on SmackDown 1000 with Ric Flair, Triple H and Randy Orton, the evolution standpoint. Now, what do you think? He was going in it and they're teasing it now. Batista's gonna have one last match with Triple H perhaps at a Wrestlemania. I know, it's gonna be insane. So what are your thoughts on Dave Batista as a person, Nick? And what do you think would he go through in order to be ring ready? Now he's obviously a famous film star and then going back into the ring. Right, Dave Batista is a lovely guy. I, I only sort of like met him briefly when we were filming Final Score. 
Um, but but yeah, he seem he does genuinely seem like a nice guy, very approachable. Mm. You know, he was happy to have his photo taken with people. That's really nice. Yeah, you know? you've got a photo so, with him, haven't you? So yeah, the with I think um, he's. The thing, is, the thing with Batista, Batista is he's kind of gone away from WWE, come back, gone away, come back. You know, I mean, mm. I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly how old he is now. He must he's, be well in his 40s yeah, now, I think. Yeah, he's probably not far off turning 50. Listening, hearing about him making a comeback to WWE, I just find myself thinking, thinking, you know, once a WWE wrestler, always a WWE That's wrestler. That's right, yes. No matter how many times you go away, <clears throat> you will come back again. You know, yes, people that's just it. boomerang back to WWE. People still talk think, about The Rock, even though I don't think he's had an active match for about ten years. Oh, possibly even more than that. Mm. I mean, I mean, in his case, I mean, he's been, he's in just like every movie going at the moment. That's right, so it's insane. Him, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, you know. But um, he does work a lot more. Where a lot of them have, where a lot of, um, I mean, and he's a very in film star. Very you know, in film you know, star. He's, you know, he was I pretty can, much. He yeah. was, you know, he was pretty much the what's the term. What's the term I'm looking for? Media lovely, definitely. Perhaps you know, perhaps a bit of a cash cow in. Um, yes. In terms, you know, he was he was kind of like the star who was guaranteed um, to bring to be, people to in. bring people in. Yes, definitely. You know, a bit like Will Smith in the nineties. Will Smith and definitely Dave Batista, him, Randy Orton, Ric Flair, and Triple H. Can you imagine that combo? That just oozes ratings. I'm I'm amazed the ring will stay upright. In, Indeed, in yeah. That. <laughs> I know, yeah. And they've also brought back Undertaker and Kane, which is insane. They're bringing back a lot of the older stars, and it shows that the product needs the old personalities. And I think Dave yeah. Batista versus Triple H. I think that's going to be a great match, and I can imagine that Dave uh, Batista is really going to train hard to get back into ring yeah. shape. I mean, I've seen some of the food that The Rock eats on a daily basis to stay in the shape he is. And literally, it's a dining table's worth of food. When he filmed Hercules, I watched this interview with uh, him, and he was literally eating this whole table's worth of food and then exercising for most of the day. This guy is pumped up. And it wouldn't surprise me if Dave Batista does a similar thing. Yeah. Really gets yeah. back into ring shape. around and he'll just eat anything. Ah! Uh, but yes, indeed. I think the thing is, I mean, wrestling, I mean, we remember wrestling in the That's 90s. It. And you've got some really, wrestling. When in... it really took off and it was, uh, and yeah. yeah. The Attitude Era. And you've got some wrestling experience yourself, haven't you? Yes. I've um, I've, I've uh, compared a few local matches um, this here, is true. here in Essex. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's, and I have to say, you know, I've, there's some brilliant passion out there. There's some brilliant characters. That's right. Um, in the local wrestling world. So if you do see a local wrestling match um, near to you in the area, my please do be, check go it along, out. Go along and support it. There's there's great guys. You know, it's a you know there's lots of like really and it really uh, people who are just enjoyable to watch. That's right. And really and then, entertaining and athletic as well. Mm. You can tell that they're hungry to show yeah. the crowd how yeah. well they and can think, do. And I think um, I mean that in in many ways I think lots of people do, the. When WWE took off in the early 90s, mm, obviously it really was, took um, off. It, it was, was around for ages before back that. then, and it yes. was around for ages. But I just, I just remember in the in the 90s, you know, yeah. you had you had songs about wrestling in the top 40. That's right, the Attitude know, and, Era and things and like that was, was the top yeah, one. It was in many ways. It just it that was when it kind of went for went from being quite popular to just stratospheric. Mm. And I think. Um, that that lasted for for kind of like around around a decade. It was still being yeah. shown on on national on you know terrestrial television. Te at the Channel time. Five and, and when, things like that yeah, were definitely having. And it. when that and um, yeah, so I think they they are still the people that that people that people yeah. remember. Everyone know? remembers the the mankind versus Undertaker Hell in a Cell match things like that. That's one of the top ones so, where Mick Foley nearly got his back broken from being thrown from the top of the cell. There we go. Uh, into the ring again. I think yeah. the thing we find Props is to Mick Foley. Yeah, I think basically I think the reason that uh, the other reason that a lot of wrestlers are coming back is simply because they just they just need they just want to it's it's good for them to just dine out on this thing they're known for that's right until they basically become absolutely crippled and have no bones left which is what's going to happen to the undertaker if you're watching mark calloway please don't wrestle anymore it's doing you in anyway we're going to now move on to house on the haunted hill which is a new series on netflix and it is making people sick ah 
Yes, this is actually making people feel ill. And I can't believe it. I've watched the pilot episode, and to be totally honest with you, it's the first time I've been scared properly in about six years. Now, nothing has really touched me. No games and things like that have really scared me much, but this has. I was watching it with the boss, and we were scared what's it less. It's probably the most scariest 50 minutes of my uh, horror movie watching, you know, sort of subculture. That's it was actually fun. really worrying. I mean, when you, consider, when you consider when The Exorcist first came out in the that's 70s, right. you had people throwing up, out, throwing up in know. and out of the cinema. And that's what people are doing with House on the Haunted Hill. So what, is, that, it, what, what is making them sick? What is, right. what is it doing to them? Basically, it has a general sense of foreboding. Right. There is the fact that what you see safe as in your house and things like that and your natural so the environment setting, yeah. the setting the fact that it takes a natural nice environment and turns it flip side is what's you know majorly about it as well so is and it a bit the like reminiscent like paranormal activity yes that? very much paranormal activity-esque apart from the dodgy camera work and and better effects and of yeah. course you've got the fact that the ghosts are scary and inanimate objects that you wouldn't be scared by are then teared into scary things. So I would definitely say no spoilers here, but it's well worth a watch, definitely. And uh, yeah, so it's been making people sick. So if you're quite sensitive to that stuff, watch it and see if you like. But if you are genuinely scared of horror films, avoid it. Um, I'd like to do an update on the hinching aspect of what we were talking about, Nick. Oh, Remember, is, this your, is this the housework queen? The housework queen, Mrs. Hinch. Uh, that sounds condescending, it's not, seriously. If anyone yeah. who can make house, housework fun and stuff, yeah, I salute them. I know, yeah, she's doing a really good job. Her followers are going up and up and up and up and up as the time goes by. I think it's something like 90,000 or something insane. I'm it's, sure if the boss is watching, that, yeah. she'll let me know. Um, yeah, there's just tons of people. We've been doing it every night. Um, you know, to be quite gross, I've been cleaning the cat litter every night and it's making the cat litter last longer. I've been, you know, putting this special stuff down the toilet, getting rid of the lime scale, been putting soda crystals down the uh, plug holes, things like that with vinegar. Really sort of saving myself time in the long run, thanks to Mrs. Hinch. And I think she's great. And I think if you are into housework, or you're not into housework and you want to try and make it a bit fun, I would definitely suggest checking her out. She's a very interesting woman, very down to earth, and she's very helpful. You need to do a video of you doing all this stuff and put like a dance soundtrack onto it. Yes. Well, that's Watch already. Me as I clean the litter tray. That's exactly what she does. You know, she actually does her um, her videos to music, like popular music as well. So I think if you think about it like that, if you try and make something benial and boring entertaining i think props to you i does think she's fantastic like dancing and stuff? she does a lot of dancing and a very relaxed essex um sort of like accent and she's very homely and very kind person so i think if anyone can make housework fashionable it's mrs hinch so big right. shout out to her um and like we were talking about Halloween again, like I was saying, uh, Badger Jr. is really looking forward to it. We do have some Halloween candy that I'm going to do a, um, a food mukbang on. And it's similar to the Harry Potter ones, you know, every flavour. So some of it's going to be nice and some of it's going to be horrible. We've got that to look forward to. That's going to be fun. And uh, hopefully me and Nick are going to do a little chat about Essex horror and Essex sort of paranormal activity, mm. aren't we? we and uh, like yes, indeed. And I'm off to Giving a thing. Giving ourselves nightmares. Yeah, and I'm off to a thing next week at the local museum, uh, which is going to be nice. I'll do a talk about that later on if I can. It's going to be good fun. So, uh, anything else you'd like to add to the show, Nick, before we head off? Wow, I'm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of getting myself an advent calendar for November because there's loads of them in the shops. You know, and to be continued. Just, and we can't just have them all sitting around until December. So, no. You know, the thing is, you've probably got enough enough to last you the first few month, few months of next year as well. This is I, true. Why would you sell Advent calendars in October? Exactly. Why? Exactly. Yeah. And and I got my first Black Friday email earlier this week. <laughs> Black Friday, Black Friday, listeners is the end of November, November and 
it's only been in the last couple of years that we that anyone outside of America has even heard of it because everyone's having Black Friday because all of a sudden all the websites have Black Friday deals. But God. yeah, it doesn't actually happen until the end till the end of November. So yeah, I mean, Christmas hearing about it didn't completely surprise me. You know, even though I'd much rather everyone focused on Halloween for now. You know, st you know, live in the present, live for the moment, and all that. Um, but yeah, Black Friday emails already. So you just digest that before we head off, and it's bye from me, and bye from me, and him. And him and you. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on today's episode and anything you would like us to chat about next time. And let us know what your thoughts are on today's show. Feel free, guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Ta-ta for now, peeps. Bye, guys.